Hello everyone and welcome back to the X-Ring. I think it's going to be an exciting episode for you and you definitely want to stick around for this one. Imagine if you will, it's July 28th, 1914. It is the start of World War I. Everyone was carrying bolt action rifles like this 1903 with a long bayonet. But the face of the battlefield had changed. We didn't see those longer range engagements, or you had those, but now we had the incorporation of trench warfare. So imagine turning the corner and facing three guys in a trench with your bolt action 30 6 While it was very effective, it was very slow, it was cumbersome, it was long, hence the advent of the Thompson machine gun. So imagine dropping into a trench, and this is what you see. you had to deal with very slow and remember they're turn returning fire at the same time now of course you did have the bayonet but you only had five rounds and so that's when you were going to a melee to a shovel or whatever just to get out of that trench so in 1918 u.s army brigadier general john t thompson invented the thompson submachine gun interesting fact this was actually the first u.s submachine gun ever now, it wasn't the first in the world. That actually belongs to the Bergman, the MP-18, which was a German manufacturer, but this was actually the first U.S. submachine gun. It was chambered in 45 ACP. They needed something for close quarters battle, and unfortunately, this really was never used in World War I because after this was released, World War I ended two days later. So you do have a push button rear stock. It does rattle, which was one of the complaints in the beginning, but you had this little dovetail that you could actually put on here and you had a stock, you had a regular grip, you had a select fire feature on the side along with your magazine release. Now, not all of them had the vertical foregrip. Some of them actually had just a regular wooden foregrip. They didn't all have vented barrels in the beginning and they didn't all have the compensator on here. It did fire from an open bolt position. The most common magazines were your 20 and 30 rounders, and this actually fits into a little dovetail here that slid upwards like that. They did have issues with the drums, and not all of these will fire the drums reliably, but you did have a very, very unique little leaf sight here. The effective range of this, being a 45 ACP, was only about 160 yards or so. That's what they claimed the effective range was. What we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot it on the bay here. We're gonna shoot that exact same setup and see how much better this does in semi as well as full auto. All right, so now let's come around that same corner again. Very, very effective, very slow rate of fire. You guys can hear that, that slow staccato. One of the beauties of the Thompson is it's super controllable and it's actually pretty accurate, but you need a rear sight for that. The rear sight actually came off during filming just a few minutes ago. Unfortunately, I do have the screws, but I do, do think the screws are stripped. So I'm gonna do the best I can. I do have a camera going down range. I wanna show you the controllability. I've got it on an Ipsic here. So let me back up a little bit and here we go. Hopefully I don't shoot my camera. Yeah, and the vertical dispersion on that might have been four inches or so, four and a half inches, but everything's in a nice little tight cluster. Let's go check it out. All right, so walking up to the target, you guys can see, look how tight that group is, 30 rounds in that tight little package. Not too bad, especially for a 45. All right, so while the Thompson is not known to be a precision firearm, I've noted that actually they can shoot pretty decent groups at 100 yards. This does look funny. It looks like everything's just kind of skeletonized. And in case you guys are wondering, there's a screw that goes here, and there's a little dovetail that slides into this. That's what keeps all of that together. But yeah, it almost looks like it's floating and there's nothing here. It almost looks like that would bend. But I want to try this at 100 yards, no rear sight, because I do have the charging handle here that'll kind of line it up for me. So let's see if maybe we can hit one on that half size Ipsic. All right, here we go. Standing 100 yards. All 
Hey. All right, so realistically speaking, it should be good from 100 and in. We do have a half-size IPSC at 75. I've actually moved up 25 yards. And then we have a full-size IPSC at 200. I've got five rounds. Let's just try it at five rounds, see if we can even get close to the target. So uh, we'll just start at 75, see if we can get one at that one. All right, and then we'll see if we can actually hit the 175 yards. So doubtful, but here we go. One, and that's all we got. So we're out of ammo. So it is doable, but like I said, not, not probable. I guess we'll shoot a couple more up close to see how it goes. Like I said, I really hate that the rear sight is gone because I wanted to try out that leaf sight at three and 400 yards just to see if we could lob some in there. But let's go hit the short range. All right, guys, so make no bones about it. Even at 25 yards on a plate rack, and those are six inch steels, even without a rear sight, I think this thing's actually pretty potent. So uh, what we'll do is, uh, let's see if we can run the plate rack. Here we go. Oh, it's always one makeup shot. But you guys can see it's actually very, very quick. Let's see if we can hit one over here on the, uh, the steel. And then we'll go full auto on this. And I am out of ammunition. All right, so that was a short, sweet review of the model of the 1921 Thompson machine gun. It is a unique machine gun, and it's really cool to know the history of it. And also keep in mind, guys, especially for the hundreds of thousands of people that died for our freedoms, you know, in the bigger world wars like World War I and World War II, all of the wars, it doesn't matter any of them, uh, we have to keep those freedoms. And uh, these are actually what keeps our freedoms in check against the tyrannical government. I don't normally get political, but here lately they've just really been attacking that Second Amendment. So I appreciate each one of you that watches the channel, and we will do the MP5 video coming up this weekend, but I wanted to sneak this one in there because because no subgun review would be good without the Thompson. Guys, I hope you have a great week and especially a great weekend. Give your family and loved ones a big hug. Tell them you love them every day. Have a good one. Take care. You're good, kid. You're pretty good. But you'll only be second best as long as I'm around. It's a lucky day.